Welcome back, Sebastian here. So today I'm going to be doing my preview for the 2023 Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. So of course this race is the final race of the uh, 2023 Formula 1 season. So final preview of the year uh, and quite a while until the next one, basically in this end of February, I believe. So uh, starting with a look at last year's result, uh, Verstappen won uh, from Leclerc and Perez. So uh, some notable moments from last year's race was that uh, going into it, it was seen as a battle for P6 and the constructors between Alfa Romeo and Aston Martin. Uh, and obviously Aston Martin, uh, Alfa Romeo came out ahead on that. And uh, both teams have kind of gone on very, very divergent paths this year. Uh, of course, this was uh, Sebastian Vettel's uh, final Grand Prix uh, as, of, as of today. And uh, he had a pretty good performance, really good performance in qualifying and a decent uh, result in the race as well. Um, Hamilton, of course, had a mechanical DNF as well. One of his uh, pretty rare uh, Hamilton mechanical DNF at Mercedes. And of course, there was uh, contact between Mick Schumacher and Nicholas Latifi, which sent Latifi into his bin and caused him to retire. So uh, taking a look at this weekend and this weekend's uh, tires, uh, so we have the hard C3, medium C4, and the soft C5. So the three softest tires in Pirelli's range, same tires as at Vegas. However, a lot of the temperature concerns that we had at Vegas will not be uh, present at this weekend's Grand Prix. So uh, taking a look at the schedule, and I've decided to include the Formula 2 schedule. Uh, I've admitted the practice session, but uh, that's beside the point. So. Uh, FP1, uh, 1.30 local time, Formula 2 qualifying, 5 o'clock, uh, no, 3 o'clock local time, FP2, 5 o'clock local time, Saturday, FP3, uh, 2.30 local time, and then the Formula 2 sprint race, uh, 4.20 local time, qualifying is then at 6 o'clock, uh, that's for F1, of course, and then on Sunday, we have the Formula 2 feature race, uh, that's at 1.30 local, 1.15 local time, and then the Formula 1 Grand Prix at 5 o'clock. And going into this weekend, there's quite a few key battles in both the constructors and in the drivers that I wanted to kind of highlight. Uh, so for the constructors, so there's two battles that I think are really of note. Uh, second in the constructors championship is up for grabs. Mercedes 392 points, Ferrari 388. So <clears throat> only four points uh, separate the two. So very, very close. Uh, and there's definitely a possibility that Ferrari could get that. Uh, and it is realistic as long as, you know, one Ferrari finishes ahead of one Mercedes and the other does the same as well. Uh, now, uh, the battle for fourth place in the, in the constructors is still on as well, but the gap is bigger. Uh, McLaren, uh, 284 in fourth and Aston Martin fifth with 273. Uh, that's an 11 point gap. Would need a fantastic race for Aston Martin and an absolute disaster for McLaren to realistically uh, have that be reversed. Uh, but... You know, uh, the past weekend at, in uh, Vegas, that's exactly what we got. We got Stroll, P5, that's 10 points. And we got uh, Alonso, P9, so that was 12 points. And um, Piastri only got the two points there. So that was 10 points swing right there. So basically, it'd have to be something along that lines uh, for them, for that result to change. Then in the drivers, uh, battle for fourth place in the drivers' championship. Signs 200 points, Alonso 200 points. Signs, of course, ahead on countback because of the race win. Norris 195 and Leclerc 188. Uh, realistically, it's only between Sainz, Alonso, and Norris. But, you know, if Leclerc has another fantastic weekend and all the other three drivers have absolute disasters, it could swing Leclerc's way. And then in blue, I just want to highlight the Formula 2 cha uh, Drivers' Championship battle, which is still ongoing, although uh, the gap was much bigger than I remember it being. Uh, Porsche 191 points, Investi 166. So that's, 100, that's a 25-point gap. Uh, would basically need almost a miracle for Bestie to pull that off, but uh, still it is possible. So uh, taking a look at the track for this weekend uh, at the Abu Nias Marina circuit, uh, I think that this is a, a track where aero efficiency is going to be really key. Not like Vegas, which was much more low downforce. This is one where having that downforce, especially through sector three, a lot of slow twisty corners is going to be very important, but also being able to get uh, reduce drag and get that speed down the two long back straights. Uh, the sector three, like I mentioned, as well as the dirty air caused by uh, the, the, the way that the track's basically designed with basically only having one racing line through pretty much the entire sector is not particularly conductive to racing by, because by the time you get to uh, this part of the lap, uh, the cars are too spaced out because of said dirty air. 
And because of that, track, import, uh, track position is very important. So qualifying is a bit more important here than it is at some other tracks. Uh, and I think, you know, for one thing, slow corner speed is gonna be really key. Being able to have that mechanical grip, mechanical traction uh, to get through that sector three, uh, plus have the kind of rear end uh, grip together, turn five and turn seven is important as well. Um, as for the track itself, you know, you realistically have two, three good opportunity, three overtaking opportunities. Uh, turn five, which is where, of course, uh, famously or infamously, Verstappen kind of won the championship in 2021. Uh, you have turn six after a DOS zone, and then you have turn nine also after a DOS zone. So uh, finishing up with uh, some predictions for this year's race, I think, as always, I think the reasonable thing to do is to predict a Max Verstappen victory. There's a, realistically, there isn't really any other alternative. I think for the second and third spot on the podium, though, there is quite a bit of debate to be had. Um, I do think that McLaren seem to be much more optimistic about this weekend, hence me wearing my McLaren shirt. Uh, but I do think that Norris uh, will bounce back from a pretty rough uh, race at Vegas. And basically, at this point, it's been confirmed that it was basically a combination of things. Uh, but that led to his retirement last race. But uh, at the end of the day, it was kind of his mistake. Final spot on the podium, I think it's going to be a tough one. Perez could get it. Uh, there are some characteristics about this track that he that will suit his driving style. But I think I'm going to go with a guy who's uh, really desperate to kind of end the year on a really high note. And that is going to be Charles Leclerc, who had a really great run of form uh, in Vegas and, you know, could have had a chance of winning that Grand Prix. So uh, that's all for my uh, review, or not my review, my preview of the uh, Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.